Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I want to go over some NCLEX question and answer strategies. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a typical NCLEX style question. It's going to be over congestive heart failure. I'm going to go over the options with you and then while I'm doing that, I'm going to give you three tricks on how to get the right answer. Because one of the ways to study and prepare for the NCLEX exam is to practice NCLEX style questions over and over. And you're not necessarily memorizing the material or memorizing the answers because that really doesn't help. What you're doing is you're learning how to answer those questions. You're developing strategies on how to eliminate those options. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now on my website, registerednursern.com, a card should be popping up or a link in the description below. You can go to my website and take free practice quizzes that will test your knowledge on NCLEX material and even prepare you for your nursing lecture exams. Okay, so let's get started by reading our question. Okay, the question says, a patient is hospitalized with congestive heart failure exacerbation. On assessment, you note the patient has two plus pitting edema in the lower extremities and crackles throughout the lung fields. Vital signs are blood pressure 180 over 96, heart rate 95 beats per minute, respiration 16, temperature 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and O2 saturation on room air is 90%. The patient is taking the following medications, Lasix IV, Digoxin, Miralax, and multivitamins. Which of the following findings is the most concerning? Okay, so after you read the question, what you want to do is you want to do trick number one. You want to look for clues in this question that's going to help you answer the options. So don't look at the options yet. So how you do this is while you are reading the question, you are looking for the following things if you're given this. A diagnosis, the assessment findings, vital signs, and medications. Any of this stuff that is in an NCLEX question should be sending off red flags because you need to be looking at this information and critically thinking, okay, why did they put this in there? Is this a clue to help me answer the question because I need to know what's truly going on with the patient. So let's analyze this together. Okay, diagnosis. This question gave us a diagnosis. The patient has congestive heart failure exacerbation. So you need to say, okay, as a nurse, what do I need to know about congestive heart failure? You need to know that the heart is weak. It doesn't pump as efficiently. So what's going to happen? Fluid is going to back up into the extremities, into the lungs, and the patient may not be breathing well. And um, you'll see the two plus pitting edema. So we know that this patient is in fluid overload. So our assessment findings helped prove that and our diagnosis lets us know that as well. Okay, and then you want to look at your vital signs. Um, ask yourself, are they normal? Are they abnormal? Are they concerning? Here are vital signs. Our blood pressure is high. Our heart rate is high. And this is because our patient is in congestive heart failure. They have too much blood volume or fluid on the body, so you're going to have high blood pressure and a high heart rate. It's a lot of stress on the heart. And our oxygen saturation on room air is pretty low. It's only 90%. We want the patient to be a little bit higher unless they had COPD or some other underlying lung problem, which this question doesn't tell us that, so we're not even going to go there. So we know that, hey, these crackles are affecting this patient's breathing. They're definitely in fluid overload. Then we are going to look at medications. That is another red flag in this question. They let us know that the patient is on Lasix IV. So what is Lasix for? You've got to think back to that. Lasix is a loop diuretic. What it's going to do, it's going to help remove fluid through the kidneys, excessive fluid off the body. So what do you need to watch out with Lasix? Anytime you, have, anytime you have a med, you need to look at those big classic signs of things you have to watch out for for certain medications. So Lasix, we know that we've got to watch their urinary output. And we got to watch our electrolyte levels because we are going to have them urinating. They're going to be losing a lot of fluid. So one thing we got to watch is potassium levels. Okay, let's move on. Digoxin. Patients also on digoxin, which is a common medication for patients who are on congestive heart failure because it helps the heart beat more efficiently. But with digoxin, you have to watch, of course, your apical pulse before you take it, before you give it to them. And you have to make sure your potassium levels are normal. 
So we have an issue here. Lasix decreases potassium levels and digoxin, you can go into digoxin toxicity if you have too low of potassium levels. So we need to be keeping that in the back of our mind. And then Miralax and multivitamins, they're on that. That's just a little distractor. So we're keeping all this in the back of our mind and you'll be doing this while you're reading the question. Now let's look at those options. Okay, so A says A, patient's potassium level is 5 0.8. B, patient states, I've been up all night urinating. C, patient states, the lights look like they have halos around them. Or D, patient has a blood glucose level of 190. Okay, so let's move to trick two. You'll want to use this trick whenever you are looking at your options because this is going to help you narrow it down. We just have one correct option. It's not one of all those select apply. So, what for this trick is you don't get distracted with false or unrelated statements. NCLEX loves to throw at you false statements or statements that are going to distract you from what they really want to know. Because in this question, what does it want to know? It wants to know which of the following findings is the most concerning. So out of all these four options, which one as a nurse requires that you intervene, call the doctor, or do something about it? So let's look for any false or distracting statements. Okay, A, patient's potassium level is 5.8. Okay, first of all, you need to know what a normal potassium level is. Anything greater than 5.1, 5.2, depending on which literature you're reading, is high. And here the patient's is 5.8, so it is slightly high. But let's think back to our scenario. We patients on Lasix, and typically with Lasix, patients struggle with low potassium levels, not really high. So is this patient going to have a high potassium level? Probably not. Now, if this patient was taking, instead of a loop diuretic Lasix, which wastes potassium, if they were taking one of those potassium sparing drugs like spiroaldactone, which saves potassium, this would concern us because if the patient's potassium level is already high, that drug's probably keeping it high. But with Lasix, it's typically never high. So this is a false statement. It really doesn't apply to our scenario. So we are going to mark this one out. Okay, let's look at B. Patient states, I've been up all night urinating. Okay, why would the patient be doing this? Well, with Lasix, a diuretic, which we've been giving them, it causes you to urinate a lot. And patients, they will complain about this, that they will be up all night urinating, especially if you gave them a nighttime dose of Lasix, which you don't want to try to do, but sometimes that happens. So we need to keep this option and look at it a little bit further. Maybe is this, an, is this something to be concerned about? Um, is it something we may want to report? I don't know, we'll just keep it because it's really not a false or an unrelated statement because it does happen. So we'll keep that for now. Okay, C, patient states, the lights look like they have halos around them. Okay, this right here, anytime you get a statement or an option where a patient's reporting a sensory change, always keep that in the back of your mind. Hey, this may not be normal because anytime you're having a sensory change, this could be a sign of an adverse reaction to a medication. So um, we are definitely going to keep this because we know that patients taking digoxin, Lasix, is something going on that's not good. We need to look into this further. So we're going to keep that option. And then D, the last one, patient has a blood glucose of 190. Our blood glucose is a little bit high. You need to know what a normal blood glucose level is, but it's not as concerning as these other two options. And we know out of this question, there's only one right answer. So it's safe to delete this because it's really, really a distraction to really throw this off. It's a little bit, it's not concerning, concerning. We can treat it, but it's not our answer because we have two other ones that are taking more president presidents over what we need to do. Okay, so let's look at trick three. Now this is where we're gonna get our answer. Okay, anytime you have these type of questions that say most important or what's the nursing priority, you want to bring in this trick, which is use Maslow's hierarchy or the ABCs, which is airway, breathing, and circulation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these two. Okay, B, patient states, I've been up urinating all night. 
Maslow's hierarchy says that physiological needs take over psychological needs. And what this patient is experiencing, they've been urinating all night. We know that that's normal with Lasix therapy. Maybe we need to move their schedule around so they won't be up urinating all night. So this really right here is more of a nuisance for the patient psychological need than a physiological need. It could turn into a physiological need if they're up all night urinating, but compared to this one, let's look at C. Patient states, the halos look like, the lights look like they have halos around them. Now you have to remember with digoxin, one of the classic things that they really like to hammer on in nursing school, digoxin, your patient may start having visual changes, may start seeing halos, anything like that. This right here is going to be more important than this because right here, something physiological is going on with the patient. Also, you can apply your ABCs with it, circulation issues. If you have digoxin toxicity, you're gonna have some major circulation issues because you're gonna have too much dig in the system. So when you compare these two, which one is most important for the patient? Which one's gonna cause concern? And they're both true statements, which we eliminate, which we did with trick two. So the most important one is C. Patient sees halos around the lights because this is probably some digoxin toxicity. We need to report this to the doctor so we can check a digoxin level and see if they are toxic. Okay, so that is how you answer this type of NCLEX question using these tricks. I hope that helped and be sure to check out my other videos on how to answer other types of NCLEX questions. And thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.